Um, oh, I was going to give uh, an explanation of what I think a good procedure is. And I'll do this from, uh, from a document that I use internally at my work. Oh, also, this is the documentation mini comp afternoon session, in case anyone is showing up and wondering what this is. horrible. Look over there. Um, I don't think there's any profanity in this one. Uh, that's, no, that's not exactly what I wanted to see. What's a good procedure in handle, Andrew? Yeah, the print one doesn't work today, as found out. Um, really, uplift. That's that's very old. That's from two thousand eleven. Um, about resizing root. Yeah, that this one has an. Exactly the like the, the parts that I want. All right. So before lunch, someone asked a question about what goes into a good procedure, or they said that uh, he he said that he wanted to get some basic tools for writing documentation as he was developing. I don't think the guy is here right now. No, he's not. No. But um, so this is a procedure that I wrote for, uh, this is a procedure I wrote because I work with containers and containers will eat your root partition over time and then you'll have to resize root. And the part that I want to point out is that the way that I conceive of technical procedures is that there's uh, an exegetical part, an explanatory part, and then an incantation if it's a command line thing. So you have like uh, for step one, log out of all users. For step two, log in as root. For step three, unmount home. And here, I have an explanation, and then the incantation itself, unmount slash home, and list all the names. That, so you get the idea. The idea is uh, you reduce whatever it is you're doing to what is called a tractable set of steps. Tractable just means divisible into bits. Everything that can be done from like tying a shoe to cooking an egg to going to the moon is tractable. Otherwise, it couldn't have been done. Articulating what is tractable is tougher. So I explain what's going to be done, and then I provide the incantation to do it. And that's it. I don't have anything else to say about it. If there's any questions, I'll talk about it, but I don't think there's that much to it. Oh, one second. I'm going to have to hand the microphone to people. This thing. Back to our discussion. Uh, we are talking about just superficial list here. Now, what user, or particularly not skilled uh, administrator, what do if he couldn't mount uh, home? So the question is, what would an unskilled administrator do if he could not unmount home? It's written right there in the procedure, you mount slash home. If U mount for some reason is not available inside the system, there is no part in this procedure that gives you recourse for how to install U mount. Is that that's the the question, or that's that's the complaint? Okay. Most of the time, we have these steps which you're supposed to do, like this one. But there is no reference to what to do if this step doesn't work for some reason. Because, well, uh, taking into account, we have uh, 
hyper, uh, hypertext reference stuff. We can actually put the, the procedure yes. In Also nice. Then one we don't use it because starting from the from the top line, you can unmount it. You need at least the reference to a user or something like this to find out what particular process hold this file system. Then second, I think F disk. Uh, well, that's mostly F disk, but Red Hat F disk doesn't use the uh, sectors. It still uses the cylinders which is very inconvenient sometimes, so you need to put fdisk that dash lu. Then the th uh, next thing, it depends on the file system, obviously, which is home. And again, uh, it would be useful to put some reference there. That's what I'm talking about. We have only one level and we have very superficial level of the documentation. We never have the second level. I'm not talking about third. This procedure is specifically written for use in a Fedora environment. A, a Fedora environment uh, on which Docker is installed and where home has been. Right. You're talking about general documentation that gives you. So, oh, I'm, okay, so this guy's been asking a question for a while. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yes, there is, because at the beginning of your document, you have a, this is the minimum knowledge and skill set required to complete this. This is, uh, applies, yeah, exactly, the reference set, like this only applies to a Fedora system, uh, or in, in this case, it only applies for a Fedora system, but in your document, uh, no matter what you're doing, you have, you've got to sort of provide those guidelines. And also at the beginning, uh, if during this procedure there are, um, you enc um, encounter any issues, please like contact, uh, here's the developer's contact, here's the author contact, and you put that at the beginning so it doesn't clutter up um, the individual steps of the procedure. So, um, That's effectively all that we have in the documentation now. If something goes wrong, please contact your representatives. Please contact your system administrator. I am the bloody system administrator. I am supposed to fix this. And it, it is, it, and documentation is not helpful if it says, if something goes wrong, please contact your system administrator. I, no, 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 I'm not talking about this particular key, uh, piece of documentation. We, we decided it is some preliminary draft and we're not talking about it. But what I'm talking about, what I want to see, what I want to see, I, can, I want to see references as they used to be. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> as I said, I was admired by the documentation for Sanos uh, 2.4. It was full shelf and all the technical... Sanos, yes. And all the shelf has all, well, at that point, uh, it has enough uh, technical details for me. I could, I could be wrong. It could be my my level of understanding at this po at that point of time. But what I do remember, I could find the stuff which I didn't know in this documentation. And then this stuff was cross-referenced. So if something was not right at this particular point, there was some hint where to find the answer. Here, I don't have any hints where to find the answer. That means... Again, we are going back to the to, to the level of the documentation. The documentation uh, nowadays documentation actually have implication of some technical level. 
what should I do if I'm, uh, I don't know, 10 years school student and I try to do something? You're stuck. You don't have any experience. You're stuck. That's the problem. That? You're stuck. Yeah. You have no way to go. You have documentation, but you have no way to go. You have no direction where to go. And you have hypertext. You can actually put links inside it. On each, on each step, you can uh, say it's put the links. If you put, well, step three, amount home. You can put actually links to at least to ho to mount uh, main page, which says why you couldn't mount it at some po at some times. Thanks. Um, I I I think I understand what you're getting at is that you want to make the error handling process explicit in the document. And uh, that can be done. I've seen it done before. It's not done very much anymore. The way it used to be done was to, uh, was to present the process in the form of a flowchart. Now, end users hated that sort of documentation, and that's, what, that's why nobody does it anymore. Um, but what you've got a valid point in that error handling does need to be considered. Uh, but I think Zach's point is that really here was that uh, this sort of simple flow, uh, 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 mention a point, uh, show what uh, what needs to be done, move on to the next one, makes things very, very easy for, uh, for the user. What, what we do in our, in our documentation is pretty much that, um, with a statement like the one that the gentleman on the, on the left here uh, uh, said before at the very beginning of the document, saying this is uh, the uh, assumed level of uh, of expertise for the uh, for the user of the document. I don't know if that helps or not, but. Uh. Um, you're right. Um, with the documentation that most people are writing here, it's an enterprise level product, or. It's a fairly complex product. <laughs> okay. So there is an assumed level of knowledge with a commercial product because you're probably paying a lot of money for it. Um, and with a community product, you would hope that there's some sort of way to ask the community, oh, hey, this procedure failed in the docs. What do I do? And the community is friendly enough to help. If the community gets a dozen of those a week, you know, maybe it's time to either revise the product or revise the documentation to account for it. But every document can't move everyone from a year 10 school student to a proficient software user. Um, there has to be some middle ground where you stop writing and you go, you need to know how to use this to use the docs. Hmm. That's all I had to say about this procedure. I don't have anything else. <laughs> like, um, Ricky from opensource.com is here if she wants to talk. I know I said to do this non-verbally, but here I am lying. <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah, OK. Ricky from opensource.com. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I said I would come down like Price is Right, but I didn't. So, um, is anyone familiar with opensource.com? A few of us. Okay. Uh, opensource.com, the URL is in the name, and it's a site supported by Red Hat. Uh, the site turned, just turned six in um, January, uh, the 25th, I think, 24th or 25th. And um, I've only been on the site for about a year. Um, my background is in tech journalism. I've been a tech journalist for quite a few years. I worked on Linux Pro Magazine, Sysadmin Magazine, a bunch of freelance uh, work for Network World, Linux.com, and other sites. So I'm not a tech writer, um, but I'm a huge fan of uh, documentation. And um, 
Uh, I mean, I'm not a, a documentation writer, I guess. But um, and so on opensource.com, we it's a community site supported by Red Hat, and so almost all the articles are written by people in open source communities. It's not a Red Hat marketing site, so you're not going to find a bunch of Red Hat coverage on it. That's on different sites. Uh, you'll find uh, coverage of um, you know project, lots of projects you've never heard of, I'm sure, and then some uh, how-to type articles. Uh, you know, people getting into open source for the first time. Um, that sort of thing. People from all over the world write for the site, and uh, most of them are not professional writers or have writing experience. And so um, there are many opportunities to write for the site, but one thing I tell people is documentation is a great way to write for the site because many open source projects don't have anyone doing documentation, you know, or uh, any writers, you know, very experienced writers, but they want documentation. And we have um, a couple of editors on staff, and so we edit everything. And so if anybody wants to write for us and end up with stuff you can use on your project, um, that's a, a good way to kind of kill two birds right there. You get publicity for the project, and then you get professionally edited and promoted content that then you can then go, you know, put on your site and have documentation. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about opensource.com, and uh, uh, we have a documentation column, and we're always looking for articles for that. It's a community column, so there's not just one single person uh, writing for it, and it's not on a schedule either because it base, it's based on when people want to submit content. And uh, one thing we're always looking for is uh, content on best practices for writing documentation, tips and tricks, tools, you know, different um, programs that you might be using, you know, or workflows, you know, so if anybody wants to share that kind of content or just read it, it's on the site. So any questions about opensource.com or no? Right. Yeah. And the email address is open at opensource.com or you can reach me at Ricky. It's R-I-K-K-I at opensource.com. And so we would love to see people writing for the site or just send us messages if there's stuff you'd like us to cover. We um, have some people who are interested in ideas because they want to write, but then they can't come up with ideas. And so um, we have a writer's list and we just send a note and say, somebody wants to know about this. Can you write? And often people will jump on that. So thank you. We have far fewer people than we did before lunch, so maybe we should have done the discussion before lunch. But if anybody, if anybody has anything they want to talk about, now is the time. Otherwise, Andrew Burden, it's you. I mean, like, oh. <laughs> oh, wait, it, it was Lucy first. Oh, sorry. This... Oh, are you? Do you want to swap? Yeah, clearly. That's really indecisive. Does anybody have anything to uh, discuss, or shall Lucy? You want to? So while waiting for the setup, uh, we have started porting most of our stuff from uh, MediaWiki into Markdown format and using uh, Make the Docs, which is used by Read the Docs. Uh, I've heard people talking about, I just completely forgotten, you said DocBook. Oh, yeah, we're talking about, yeah. yeah DocBook. Doc so what do other people use for their, like, uh, documentation systems to ensure that it's, like, version controlled as and also generates properly? Like, the people composing things in Markdown or the people actually making raw HTML? What do you, uh, what are people doing? Um, so when I first started working at Red Hat, it was all uh, DocBook XML. And <clears throat> I personally prefer DocBook XML because I like indexes. This is just a personal preference. This is not a, a company policy at all. Um, I like a really good index. I think an index should maybe have like three or four terms per area so that any possible way, any keyword that you can think of will be in the index and direct you to the part of the documentation uh, relevant to what you're trying to learn about. I get that in XML, I get, or I get that in DocBook XML with uh, index term is the name of the tag. More recently, uh, we've moved to Markdown and Restructured Text and ASCII doc. And that's cool too. I can work in that. Um, 
trying to think of anything. Like I, that's what I use. Uh, and did you ask a question about porting from one place to another? I just had a complete mental blank then. You asked me and I think, yes, I did. But what was the question? <laughs> Take a seat. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, basically just a query. Has uh, anyone else been through that journey of porting from one system to another and all that? Yes. Um, so originally everything was saved uh, it, it, at Red Hat. Everything was in SVN. It was uh, DocBook XML in SVN repositories. Um, now, more often than not, it's uh, Git repository and it's uh, Markdown or Markup. But for certain products, there's still uh, certain products are still DocBook XML. And on a couple of occasions, uh, so it's easy to convert. You can be uh, you can convert with automatic tools from a semantically richer language to a semantically poorer language. So from like DocBook XML to Markdown or restructured text or whatever. Going the other way though, which is sometimes necessary, I've had to do this on two occasions and on both occasions I just hand code it in and it takes like 14 hours and it's, it sucks. Yeah. I guess um, while we're sharing experiences and all that, um, when I was at the Australian National University, initially we had a folder full of Word documents. And our knowledge manager had this idea of, um, let's organize it by um, putting shortcuts, which didn't work on the Mac I used at the time. And so the idea was to start moving towards uh, Markdown, because to quote the service system manager, it's very easy to make professional looking documents, as opposed to Word. Um, unfortunately, you know, some people um, with the mostly Windows-based stuff were a bit hesitant to use it, and I think in the end they were using some sort of something similar to Wiki. In my current position, documentation has been scarce, and a similar thing in Word documents in SharePoint, um, but we're moving towards Confluence. Although I guess if I had full control of everything, I'd say uh, uh, Git and Markdown, because at least then you can compile it down HTML or PDF or... Um, if no one has anything else, then... Oh, Stephen, no, no. Stephen Ellis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, uh, so I'm going to give the floor to Lucy.